and a very warm welcome. Now today I want to talk all about measurements and scaling down. So we'll be looking at the metric versus the imperial measurement system and I'll also be telling you how to reduce the size of full-sized items down to your chosen scale. Okay, so I want to begin by talking about the imperial and metric measurement systems. So the imperial system uses inches, feet, yards, etc. And the metric system uses millimetres, centimetres, metres and so on. Now this actually surprised me when I was doing the research for this episode, but there are actually only three countries in the world still using the imperial system. And they are the USA, Myanmar and Liberia. Now here in the UK we began using the metric system in 1965 and you will find that anybody born before that time or who grew up using the imperial system will still use it today. Now for doll's house furniture purposes I work in millimetres but knowing that I have a few followers in the US I always give the measurements in my cutting lists in millimetres and inches and that's in my video tutorials and in each of my books. And also in my books you'll find a handy conversion chart showing the conversion between millimetre and inches from half a millimetre, which is 1 64th of an inch, right up to 165 millimetres, which is six and a half inches. Now some of the measurements used in the imperial system can seem a bit of a mouthful. So for example, 60 millimetres is two and 23 sixty-fourths of an inch. So wherever possible, I will round down the inch measurement to the nearest whole fraction, just to make it easier. But that isn't always possible if you're cutting a piece that needs to fit inside an opening or inside a cupboard, then it will need to be exact. Otherwise you can be out as much as half a millimetre, which in 12th scale is quite a lot. Okay, so now I want to take you back to basics and let's have a look at the millimetre and inch measurements together on a rule. Okay, so what I've done here is in large part of a standard 12 inch rule and we've got centimetres and millimetres along the top here and inches along the bottom. So let's zoom in on that first inch and have a closer look. OK, so along the top here, we've got the centimetres here in the bold numbers and then each centimetre is made up of 10 millimetres and the line in the centre there shows 5 millimetres. And probably just because I've grown up with the metric system, I just find it so much easier to navigate. So if you need to go to 24 millimetres, you've got the 20 and then you would just go to 1 before the 5. The inch measurement down here is made up of the fractions. We've obviously got half an inch, three quarters, one quarter. You've then got an eighth of an inch, which is this line here, one sixteenth. And they're not actually shown on this ruler, but you will see it on most steel rules, is the one thirty second of an inch. And then one quarter of this 16th measurement is a 1 64th of an inch. Now if we look just at one inch, and I've got this piece of paper here so that I can line it up like that. So one inch is equal to 25.4 millimetres. Now in all of my cutting lists and books I would then round that up to 25.5. So I'm just rounding it up by a tenth of a millimetre, so it's hardly anything at all. So as I mentioned earlier, I try to make my cutting lists as simple as I can. So wherever possible, I'll round up or down to the nearest whole fraction. So for example, if we were making a small table and I wanted the top to be 40 millimetres square, the actual correct translation of 40 millimetres into inches is one and 37 sixty-fourths of an inch. But because it doesn't have to be an exact measurement, I would round that down to one and nine sixteenths of an inch, which is just before the yellow line there. So you're talking half a millimetre difference. So with something like a tabletop, it wouldn't matter. But if that was going to be 
a divide, say in the cupboard area, and it had to reach from the top to the bottom of the cupboard, then I would have to do that as, as an exact measurement, or your divide is going to be that much short and isn't going to glue into place correctly. So wherever I can, I'll give the nearest whole fraction, and by that I mean either a sixteenth, an eighth, a quarter, a half, three quarters, and so on. Now, as I said earlier, the, the millimetre measurements probably just seem so much easier to me because I grew up using them. But as well, I think it's all just laid out for you. Like the example I gave a moment ago, you know, 24 millimetres, you just look, there it is. If I wanted 48 millimetres, I go there, two before the 50. But in inches, 48 millimetres is one and 57 sixty-fourths. And to me, that just seems, I'd have to take a long time finding that. So I know, you know, an inch is 64 sixty-fourths. So would I count back or would I come forward from the inch? I would have to spend quite a bit of time working that out. Now, I know it all depends with what you've grown up with and what you feel comfortable using, but I have had a few people, um, e even from the US where they still use Imperial, saying that they do find the fractions difficult. So I would say if it doesn't just come naturally to you that you can just look at the rule and find that measurement, then do try and use millimetres. Um, and all rules nowadays will have the inches and the centimetres and millimetres showing on them. So it might be an idea just to experiment with both sets of measurements and just see which one you feel more comfortable using. OK, so I now want to talk about scaling down, so reducing a life-size piece of furniture or item into your preferred scale. So let's do that now. And as an example, I'm going to be using this pretty basic dining room chair. I always begin by making a rough drawing of the piece from the front and the side view. I then measure the piece of furniture using millimetres and jot each measurement onto my drawing. Take as many measurements as you can to get a more accurate scale reproduction. Once you've taken as many measurements as you can, use a calculator to scale them down to your chosen size. If you're working in 1 12th scale, you'd simply divide the measurement by 12. In 1 24th scale, divide by 24, 1 18th divide by 18, and so on and so on. In certain cases, you may want to round the measurement up or down to the nearest millimetre. So I've reduced each of the measurements by 12, and I would then transfer this into my cutting list book and actually create the cutting list. And where, for example, I've got over here, this bottom support is 40 millimetres high and that rounds down to 3.5 millimetres. I can't get a strip wood in 3.5 millimetres, so I would just use a 3 millimetre strip wood for something like that. And the difference is so minimal, it wouldn't be noticeable in 1 12th scale. The same as the supports here on the back. I do have a 5mm strip, but it's 5 by 5 so that would be too deep as my legs are only going to be 3mm, so I would use my 6 by 3mm strip wood for each of these three slats here on the back. And again, the difference is so minimal, it's not going to make your piece look out of scale. Another really great way of downscaling items is by buying an actual scale rule. So this is called a Doll's House Builder Scale Rule. One inch equals one foot, so it's a one twelfth scale rule. And on here, instead of inches and millimetres, you've actually got inches, feet, centimetre and metres at 1 12th scale. So let me zoom in on there and show you what I mean. So across the top of the rule here we've got our inches and feet. So these little increments here are one inch, 
and then they're divided out into quarters so you've got three, six, nine and then obviously 12 inches is one foot. And the same at the bottom you've got your centimetres and then you've got your metres. One metres just off camera there. So that would be your one metre and a hundred centimetres. So let's take, for example, our chair measurement. So our seat height was 470 millimetres, so that's 47 centimetres. So I would just come to the rule here. There you've got 45, and there's the 50. So each of these little increments are a centimetre. So you just come here to 47 centimetres, and there's the seat height. No calculating needed at all. And similarly, 47 centimetres is 18 and a half inches, so if you've measured your chair or piece of furniture in inches, then you would just come up here to 18 and a half inches, and there's your seat height. Now you haven't got the half and quarter inches measured on there, but then you would just sort of do that by eye. So you'd have your half there, and then you could go in by a quarter. But I think these are fantastic little tools to have in your toolbox and it just makes it all super easy and again it's all just laid out there for you three feet and there it is you want something to be four feet high there it is you've got something that's 50 centimeters high you've got it all there and there's no calculating needed at all now these are available for sale in my Etsy shop and they do actually also do a 124 scale rule if you prefer to work in that smaller scale. Now this is something that I created for myself some time ago and it's really useful as a starting point when you're designing your own furniture or you're about to start building a piece. And it's a list of standard measurements for pieces of furniture that are always going to have a standard height. For example, a chair. So the seat part of a chair or a bench, a sofa, an armchair, a storage bench, basically anything that's got a seat on it will always be 38 and a half millimetres high or one and a half inches high. The back of the chair or the sofa can vary depending on the style that you're going for, but that seat part will always be that same height. So, as I say, it's a really good starting point when you're designing something or about to build something. A worktop or counter height or anything that you're going to work at will always be 76 millimetres high and that's three inches high. So that might be a fixed counter height in a kitchen. It might be a workstation or a kitchen island, so anything that you stand and work at. A desk or a table, so a dining room table, or anything that you sit at is going to be 60 millimetres high or two and three eighths of an inch. A dresser or a hutch is always going to have a base height of 73.5 millimetres or two and seven eighths of an inch. Now the top of a dresser or a hutch can vary, again depending upon the style that you're going for, but commonly will be from about four and a half feet up to six and a half feet. So that would be 115 millimetres up to 165 millimetres, so four and a half inches to six and a half inches. And again, the width will depend upon the style of hutch or dresser that you're building or you might need to build it to a particular size to fit into a space in your doll's house. And the same goes for any sort of cupboard, sideboard or buffet. You can stick with that standard height of 76 millimetres or three inches, but then the width will depend upon your design and where you're fitting it in your doll's house, which is the beauty of making your own doll's house furniture. And I'll pop all of those sizes in the description box below. I really hope you found this episode useful and that you've picked up a few tips. I get lots of emails and questions about sizing and scaling and things like that, so I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!